Hey, what's up guys? Everything Apple Pro here. As is tradition on this channel, let's go ahead and compare Apple's oldest iPhone, the first iPhone, also known as the iPhone 2G, to their latest iPhone 11 Pro. And this is a comparison 12 years in the making. It's simply astounding just how far Apple has come. And these kind of videos are always fun for me, just getting that perspective, what people were living with in 2007 and what we have now in 2019 future, of course, is going to be even more exciting. Let's go ahead and get a little bit more in depth here. I actually want to do a mini tear down, go inside, see just how these compare in every possible way. So from the packaging, this is my actual rip off iPhone that I paid $3,000 for. It was resealed. Uh, the original had a very similar packaging experience. The boxes are actually very close to the uh, iPhone 11 Pros, both black here and iPhone text still shiny on the sides, just the storage labels are gone, Apple logos still present, and they pretty much look identical on the backside here. I'm astounded just how similar they are after all this time. So this is the 13th iPhone in succession, although it is called the 11 Pro, it really isn't the 11th iPhone. And I've never opened a gold 11 Pro, so this is a new one for me too. There's that, and I'm sure you've seen these a million times over on YouTube already. Cool. So. The iPhone still remains very similar in form factor. Glass on the front, although on the back, Apple has replaced the aluminum, and now with this matte texturized glass, which is the world's toughest glass. And actually, in durability testing, I found that it does stand up to that. The 11 Pro is extremely durable. Even the original iPhone was very durable in my testing. It was very thick glass, and the first time ever that Apple has used Gorilla Glass on an iPhone. And in all these years of iPhone, the form factor pretty much stays the same here. Volume buttons on the side, the mute switch, which has survived all generations of the iPhone. A very nice touch. One of my favorite things about using an iPhone. The power button has migrated to the side though. And overall, the design is very similar. Now the lens did not protrude back then. Now it does. And of course you have this triple lens configuration with the ultra wide. On the bottom, Apple is up to their trickery as always. Two speaker grates, even though there's only one speaker on both sides here on the iPhones. This is a barometer. I'm not sure what that one is. And one more thing to note is just how clean the back of the iPhone has gotten. No more text, no more labels or badges of any kind, just the Apple logo and a very nice matte texture. The original did have one as well with that aluminum and also a shiny Apple logo. So in a way, sort of a throwback there too. Slide to unlock sadly has not survived. We have swipe up to unlock, but inside the layout looks pretty much the same all these years later. Icon grids and even some of those icons still retain some of the original looks here. The first iPhone came with four gigabytes of storage and now we're up to 512. So we've come quite a long way in terms of solid state storage. The next iPhone is rumored to come with a terabyte. Now that's quite amazing. Apple discontinued the four gigabyte though not long after releasing, it just wasn't enough storage. Just in display technology alone, Apple has made leaps and bounds. The 11 Pro has the world's best display, organic LED. It's brighter, sharper, larger, better viewing angles, lower reflectivity. It's a marvel of engineering and it's only gonna get better with mini LED. Now the original iPhone was still good compared to what was out at the time. But yeah, things have come a long way for the iPhone display. In terms of usability though, this one was way more comfortable. All those ads where you can reach all the corners, absolutely true here. It's harder and harder to get to them. But of course, would you ever go back? I don't think so. Now the newest being iOS 13.1.3 or 13.2 in beta versus the original 1.0. The world of software for Apple has changed the game entirely on an iPhone. You can do things that you could never even dream of doing before, like dark mode. That's truly one of my favorites right now. I mean, when did you ever think you'd be able to get this without a jailbreak? Apple has finally started adding a lot of features that simply weren't available. You know, before you couldn't even swipe between pages, couldn't copy and paste, couldn't move applications, couldn't even screenshots. Man, the iPhone started here and like they promised with software has only gotten better. Of course, before you had a built-in YouTube application, which no longer works, only with jailbreak tweaks. Google Maps still work, and that was really nice. On the iPhone, you had really good maps, and then the whole fiasco with Apple Maps. Now Apple Maps have gotten so good, Apple started updating them to be even more detailed. You've got Look Around, which is amazing, built-in. Like This app finally feels amazing. So the refinement in software has been game changing. In terms of power, powering the first iPhone was a 412 megahertz processor made by Samsung. 
and it didn't do too bad, but there was really nothing special about it. I don't have the A13 on hand, but the processor remains about the same size, just a completely different transistor density. 90 nanometers on the original iPhone, and now we're at seven nanometers plus. This is what the ultraviolet lithography. So in terms of processors, man, completely different worlds. Your iPhone can do so much now with the amount of power, it's just unprecedented. And it's only getting better with five nanometers next year. Back in the day, you pretty much found yourself playing games like this as the iPhone really couldn't handle much with its very paltry graphics and very weak processor. But you were still happy doing it because there really wasn't an alternative. And the accelerometer, man, that changed the game when the iPhone came out. What you could do with it, just tilting your phone, man. I remember that impressing me so much. And the graphical power of the iPhone, man. Nowadays, it's amazing what it can do with pretty much any game. Consoles back in the day dreamt of looking like this. And of course, all those class sessions with Angry Birds. How could I forget this one? This is pure nostalgia right here on the original iPhone. This is what made owning an iPhone so much cooler than anything else. And the Geekbench scores pretty much can't be compared anymore due to different metrics, but this is what the original had, 135, just 135, and 128 megabytes of RAM compared to four on the iPhone, which by today's standards is still considered fairly weak. At least six gigabytes would have been nice to keep more apps open in the background, although you're lucky you could even multitask. Before, you could not do that on the original iPhone. It took the 3GS to get multitasking before just was a shortcut to open the phone app. And cameras, oh boy, this is the biggest difference between them. Now we have three, a telephoto, wide angle, ultra wide, and of course, you have this paltry two megapixel on the original, a huge flash, larger than the original camera by several times, and of course, microphone recording, where before it used the standard talk microphone, it didn't have multiples. And comparing the actual camera modules, it really gives you a scope here of just how much improvement there is. Here's that dinky little two megapixel shooter. And on the 11 Pro, we've got a 12 megapixel three lens setup here. This feels like a Tetris piece, but very cool, man. To hold this in your hand and know how much work and billions of dollars of research went into it, it's quite astounding. So there it is, 12 years of camera evolution. Now the camera app has come a long way here on the 11 Pro, Apple finally added new controls in iOS 13.2 where you can actually change the resolution up here, which is a godsend. I love this. It only took them, you know, 12 and a half years to get here, but I'm glad that we have it. Before you pretty much had no options, just take a picture and that's it. And of course the 11 Pro has deep fusion and a night mode. So the picture taking is on a whole nother level. Like it's never been this good on a smartphone and it's blown me away the performance of it. Original iPhone had no selfie camera. The new one of course does, a 12 megapixel. And let's get some samples on that one. And video, which shouldn't be possible on the 2G, but is possible because of a jailbreak tweak psych order. This is where we're at. We've got 4K, 30 frames per second on the 11 Pro. Simply stunning all the colors, dynamic range. People had to settle for this sort of quality back in the day. You simply had no choice. I really cannot believe how good camera quality is nowadays. I never thought it would get to this point. And then of course we've got ultra wide video, which allows you to be very, very close to the subject while being super far away at the same time. It's amazing. It's stabilized digitally, but it's one of the most impressive things about this year's iPhone and I can't wait to see how the camera evolves next year. And I think one of the most impressive things about owning an iPhone is the speaker quality. Just to let you know how bad it used to be, there's a little excerpt from this song. And now, it is piercing. Dolby Atmos, that has come a long way. What has gone backwards though is the support of CoverFlow. No longer, that's just not here. And this is not my music. This is some random person's music I bought off eBay. And from a repairability standpoint, Apple has certainly made things a lot easier on the newer iPhones before you had to pop this cover downwards and then unscrew all these bolts, remove the aluminum. Nowadays, you just pop the display off. Not to say replacing the back is any easier. This is like a $600 job and can't be done just by replacing the glass. You have to replace the whole housing. Okay, and this is the way the 11 Pro opens up on the inside to the right, and the original with its shell just pops straight off, and that's what the interior looks like. So you can see that in 12 years, Apple has completely went and redid everything, every process, every part, 
Every screw even is different now on the new iPhones. They are not alike in any way. And look at that battery evolution. Apple has this solid L now, a huge battery, very dense, and the materials are different. The actual connection is way different. It used to be soldered to the motherboard. As funny as that is, very sloppy, uh, and you'd have to resolder it if you wanted to replace it. Nowadays, it's much easier to replace, and hopefully in the future, we get even more battery evolution, but it's been so impressive on the iPhone 11 Pro. It'll last you one to two days. And the vibration motors. So here it is on the original and the new one. It's actually quite small for a Taptic engine. This is smaller than the iPhone XS, but since you don't have 3D touch, you really don't need that large of a Taptic engine anymore. It still works very well. I mean, it used to be a simple vibration motor, but this is one of the biggest and best evolutions on an iPhone, it's just how good they're Taptic engines are. And one of the most impressive things about the original iPhone was its stacked logic board layout. As we know on the newer iPhones, Apple has been doing this since the iPhone 10. It's a space saving technique inside of the iPhone. And as we know, Apple's trying to get every single little bit of space out of the internals, get a bigger battery in there and more components. Now, I'm not gonna take this one apart, but the Apple A13 sits inside of it. It is seriously tiny. And that's the first iPhone logic board. Both were actually very similar in size. Both were stacked and then Apple went to non-stacked on the 3G. It's really impressive. You know, they had it right since the very beginning. Of course, we had regular SIM card versus nano SIM now and in the future eSIM. And price-wise, the first iPhone cost $500 on contract. That's four gigabytes. And it cost $227 to build, which is about $281 in today's dollars compared to $490 for the 11 Pro Max with a starting price of $1,000. And $99. So the profit margin for Apple actually remains pretty decent, although you'd expect it to be more. $490 to build this is a very high price. And then of course you got to factor in R&D and all that. I think it's still comparatively fair compared to what you get in an iPhone. R&D is not cheap. Making all of these components is not cheap. So yeah, there it is. My yearly check-in on how Apple's newest iPhone is doing compared to its oldest iPhone. And it's doing great. Apple's made huge strides in the camera performance, in battery life. The finishes are amazing this year. The display is the best ever. It's simply the best iPhone ever. And I really can't wait to see what happens next year. So stay tuned, guys. Got more interesting stuff on the way. Peace.